CPU launches are like buses. You wait ages for one and then two turn up at the same time. AMD's next gen CPUs will hit the market first. So let's check out the company's new fifth gen Ryzen 7000 series processors. Now, the first thing that you need to know is that after three generations of AM4 processor, AMD is finally retiring the aging socket in favor of a new design, unsurprisingly called AM5. And this means that for the first time in more than five years, you won't be able to upgrade without changing your motherboard. And that's always been an attractive selling point for Ryzen processors. So what's prompted AMD to make this change? Well, the simple answer is that AM5 processors, of which 5th gen Ryzen 7000s are just the first, pack in a lot more pins and features than their predecessors, most notably support for DDR5 memory, plus PCIe 5 graphics cards and NVMe SSDs. These are big steps forwards for AMD, as AM4 4th gen Ryzen 5000 support DDR4 and PCIe 4, and it's also a different approach from Intel, which support both DDR5 and DDR4 on its 12th gen core platform. Now, whether this bold move from AMD proves to be the right move remains to be seen. However, as there's still a massive price difference between DDR5 and DDR4. To try and mitigate this price difference, AMD plans to release four chipsets for AM5 processors instead of the usual two. Now, performance hounds will be most interested in these chipsets, the X670E and B560E. The E in the names are noting that they support PCIe 5 throughout the system. In contrast, the X670 and B650 chipsets are cost-reduced models that only support PCIe 4 graphics cards, but can support PCIe 5 SSDs. And this is a really sensible move by AMD, as PCIe 5 is unlikely to impact GPU performance much, outside of some very specific deep learning workloads, whereas PCIe 5 SSDs are much faster than PCIe 4 drives. This array of four chips will enable motherboard manufacturers to come up with quite an extensive range, though it will mean that you need to pay close attention when you're reading those data sheets. Be aware also that the two variants of B650 motherboards will take a few weeks to appear yet. So now we've covered the basics of the new AM5 platform and what it provides. What about the 5th gen Ryzen 7000 series CPUs themselves? Well, as you'd expect, they're based on a new architecture, Zen 4, which brings a whole host of improvements to the table. However, it is worth starting off with the way that they're made, as once again, AMD has beaten Intel to the punch by delivering CPUs made using a new advanced process, in this case, TSMC N5. This is normally a 5 nanometer process compared to the 7 nanometer process of 4th gen Ryzen, enabling AMD to pack energy efficient transistors into the CPUs and more of them to boot. Now, under the hood, there is a multitude of architectural improvements over Zen 3, all of which work together to increase single and multi threaded performance as well as power efficiency. Highlights include a new front end design plus doubling the level two cache per core from half to one megabyte, which AMD claims boosts IPC by 13%. Zen 4 also adds in support for AVX512 instructions and a new six nanometer IO die. AMD has also gone to town on the clock speeds with each and every model getting a massive increase in base clock and turbo frequency. For instance, the flagship Ryzen 9 7950X runs at between 4.5 and 5.7 gigahertz. And we'll compare that to its predecessor, the 5950X, which runs at between 3.4 and 4.9 gigahertz. Unfortunately, AMD hasn't included any of its fancy 3D vCache in the first wave of 5th gen Ryzen's, so they have the same 64 gigabyte level 3 cache as their predecessors. However, we wouldn't be surprised to see X3D versions of these processors appear in 2023 with 3D vCache built in. After all, the extra cache massively boosted the gaming performance of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. As the table shows, the new Zen 4 processors officially only support 5200 MHz of DDR5. But as our testing shows later in this video, they're very happy to run with faster memory. Before moving on to the benchmarks, it's also worth noting the significant TDP increase from 4th to 5th gen Ryzen's. 
This means that although most AM4 coolers do physically support AM5, some lower spec coolers will struggle with the new AM5 processors, so check carefully before upgrading. Finally, it's also worth noting that for the first time in a standard CPU, AMD's added a GPU into each and every 5th gen Ryzen 7000. However, just like with Intel's integrated graphics, these will be largely irrelevant for gamers and content creators as they simply don't have enough processing power to render complex graphics. We benchmarked the four new AMD 5th gen Ryzen 7000s up against the equivalently positioned Intel 12th gen core CPUs plus older AMD 4th gen Ryzen 5000s. To make the comparison as fair as possible, all of the systems were tested in a very similar configuration with the same cooler, graphics card and same amount of RAM. And all the testing was conducted in Windows 11 Home with the latest drivers and BIOSes. Cinebench R23 is based on the popular modelling, animation and rendering application Cinema 4D and this test renders a complex scene on a single thread. Now, while she'd never deliberately choose to only render using a single thread, this is an interesting test as it reveals the raw performance difference between the various CPU architectures. And what's immediately obvious from this graph is how much faster the new AMD 5th gen Ryzen CPUs are. In terms of gen on gen improvement, the new 5th gen Ryzen's are on average 30% faster than the old 4th gen Ryzen's. And although none of them can quite match the Core i9-12900KS, the gap between AMD and Intel is incredibly small and arguably irrelevant. The next Cinebench test we ran renders the same scene as the previous test, but now on all available threads. So it generally favours CPUs with lots of cores and threads. The first thing that immediately stands out about this graph is the Ryzen 9 7950X, the flagship 5th gen Ryzen. This proved an incredible 52% faster than its predecessor, the 5950X, and 31% faster than the best Intel CPU, the Core i9-12900KS. The ranking of the 7900X in second place puts question to Intel's hybrid strategy. When you remember that AMD 5th gen Ryzen's are doing all of this with a single type of core. The next test, Blender, is a popular 3D rendering application that runs on all of the CPU cores and threads. This graph shows the number of seconds taken to render the scene, so a smaller number means faster rendering. After seeing the multi-threaded Cinebench results, it's no surprise to see the Ryzen 9 7950X also topping this graph, with the 7900X once again taking second place. All in all, Blender reaffirms that AMD 5th gen Ryzen really is the way to go for CPU rendering. After seeing the massive 30% boost to single-threaded rendering speed on the new 5th gen Ryzen CPUs in Cinebench, we were keen to see how the new processors perform in games. In the first game that we tested, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all the CPUs proved to have near-identical performance. As the graph shows, the performance difference in games between CPUs is marginal at best, as any one of these modern mid-range to high-end CPUs will give you brilliant gaming performance. Looked at another way, make sure you buy a good CPU, but you'll get more benefits out of upgrading the GPU, as that's what really limits the frame rate in most games. Metro Exodus also showed the same pattern as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The key takeaway from these graphs is that the CPU choice doesn't really make a significant difference in many games. Spend your money instead on a better graphics card. We also benchmarked the RPG Cyberpunk 2077. With its more demanding open world environments, this showed more of a performance difference between the various CPUs than Tomb Raider or Metro. Intel still just about managed to hold on to its performance crown, but it's a marginal lead now over AMD. And finally, we also benchmarked Far Cry 6. Just like Cyberpunk 2077, the open world nature of this game puts more strain on the CPU than traditional corridor shooters. That said, the performance difference between the CPUs is still relatively small and certainly not worthy of a press release by either company. To round off the game testing, we also ran the popular synthetic benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy on all of the CPUs. Like Cyberpunk 2077 and Far Cry 6, this did show more of a difference between the CPUs than Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, with the three highest spec 12th gen Intel processors keeping their crown. However, it is important to note that 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark, so it doesn't necessarily indicate how real games perform. 
Now, whilst pretty much all of the processors consume a similar amount of power when idle, the peak power when running specific tasks is a very different story. For instance, with the higher TDP, you'd expect the new 5th gen Ryzen 7000s to consume a lot more power than 4th gen Ryzen 5000s. But when gaming, the difference is very small indeed. For example, the new Ryzen 9 7950X only drew 9 watts or just over 1% more than the older 5950X. And if you're wondering why the power consumption when gaming is so much higher than when 3D rendering, well, that's because when gaming, the CPU and GPU are both hard at work, whereas when rendering, only the CPU is being used. As a side note, this graph highlights a point that we've been trying to make for years, that whatever Intel and AMD do to improve power consumption, the real power hog in gaming PCs is the graphics card. That said, there was a much wider variation in power consumption when 3D rendering as the CPUs attempted to outrender each other. Even though this video is all about the new 5th gen Ryzen 7000s, the big standout from this graph is the Intel Core i9-12900KS, which positively guzzles down electricity. More on this later. In the last graph, we looked at absolute power consumption when 3D rendering or gaming, but this only tells half of the story. Just as important, or arguably more so, especially when it comes to rendering, is power efficiency. To evaluate this, we divided the Cinebench 23 rendering score by the power draw, with a higher number indicating greater power efficiency. What's immediately clear from this is that the new Ryzen 7950X is not only the fastest CPU for 3D rendering, but also the most energy efficient, especially when compared to the greedy Core i9-12900KS. You can also see the improved power efficiency of the 7950X CPU and the other 5th gen Ryzen 7000s in the gaming results. Dividing the average frame rate across multiple games by the power draw shows them to be significantly more power efficient than the older 4th gen Ryzen 5000s, although the Core i5-12600K and Ryzen 7 5800X3D are still the greenest chips when it comes to gaming. Fierce competition in the CPU market means PC gamers and content creators are now spoiled for choice when it comes to choosing the perfect processor. AMD's 5th gen Ryzen 7000s have fired the first shot in the attempts for dominance in 2022 and 2023, with an all-new AM5 socket enabling support for next-gen PCIe 5 graphics cards and NVMe SSDs plus DDR5 memory. Combine this with the new Zen 4 architecture that's not only way faster than Zen 3, but also considerably more power efficient, and the 5th gen Ryzen 7000s are a very compelling option for both gamers and content creators. With four new CPUs to choose from, made up of two Ryzen 9s aimed at content creators, a Ryzen 7 for gamers, and a Ryzen 5 for mid-range systems, we'd love to know which CPU you're most interested in and why. Please do let us know in the comments below. And you'll also get a choice of four chipsets, allowing you to decide how much of a priority PCIe 5 support is for you. Now, as you'd expect, these four chipsets will result in a huge range of AM5 motherboards from all the leading brands, even if you do have to wait a few weeks for B650 motherboards to appear. Follow the link in the description below to head over to the SCAN website, where you can pick your AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPU, AM5 motherboard, cooler and DDR5 memory. Or alternatively, why not make the whole process a whole lot easier by picking one of the professionally built 3XS systems from streamlined gaming PCs right through to content creation workhorses for your next masterpiece.